Hello everyone, Jason from MisprintedMTG.com and today I'm going to show you guys how to use Photoshop to uh, see what a magic card, any magic card that you want, would look like if it was sun bleached. And we use this as a way to identify sun bleaches. Um, if you can replicate it in Photoshop, it's very likely that you know, you've stumbled across a sun bleach. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, step one, Google search the card that you want. Um, Something to note is if you don't know in Google, you could hit this little tools button and you could change the size of the images that you filter to large. We want as much resolution as possible. Um, so let's go ahead and grab this image here. Um, copy it, go over to Photoshop and we're gonna create a new document. So I'm gonna try and walk you through this. If you know nothing about Photoshop, you should be able to follow along with me. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, I understand it costs money. Um, there are alternative image editing softwares out there, such as GIMP. I'm not familiar with it, so I can't teach it to you. Um, but the philosophies of what I'm doing, um, the techniques at least, um, should apply as well. So we created this new document, but it's set to RGB color. We want to mimic what people use for printing, which is CMYK. So we select that, our white background's fine, and we hit OK. Uh, we paste this in by hitting Control V, and here's our image. Um, something really neat uh, for you know if you're not that experienced or not that comfortable after this tutorial, um, you can always click on the Channels tab right here, and you could toggle off individual color channels. Um, and you could do this actually with any of these individual channels. You could do multiple channels, like, hey, what does a card look like if it's missing black and yellow? Well, this is what Gemstone Mine would look like if it's missing black and yellow. Um, so it, it's a really cool, quick way to see, you know, what misprints are actually happening um, when you're looking at a card in your hand and playing around with the various color layers. Um, it's not perfect. It's an approximation because we're doing it off a of JPEG, but it's still really cool. So what we want to do is we want to take all these layers and we want to see what would happen if a layer is partially faded. The way that we do that is by creating a new document. We want to make sure it's set to CMYK. And we're actually going to go into our layers and we're going to make a bunch of new ones. So we need four layers. And over here on the right hand side, when you use your color picker, you get CMYK. Well, we want 100% cyan, zero magenta, zero yellow, zero black. And what we get is actually a perfect cyan. We're gonna take our paint bucket tool and we're gonna paste that into this layer and we're gonna hide it for now. And we're just gonna go through all of these the same way. So 100% magenta, paste it in, hide it. Zero that out, 100% yellow, And last but not least, 100% black. So now we have all of our layers. Um, and what this is kind of representing is um, a full print. Um, what actually happens, uh, if you read my article on how magic cards are made, you'll learn about the print rosette and it, printing is done in you know these four colors. I'm not going to go into it now. This is not what this tutorial is about. Um, so we got these four colors and now we need to essentially replicate where each of those dots are. Um, without going through raster image processing, the only way that we can really do that is going by our channels over here. Um, if I were to just select this one channel, this cyan channel, this black and white image here is actually a representation of where the cyan in this image is. So while it's not the print dots, it's actually a pretty good approximation of where the cyan should go. So we just need to take this, apply this to our other image, and then use that as a layer mask on our cyan layer. Um, so the way that we do that is we right click on this, we duplicate channel, we'll get this little message box over here. We wanna send this to our second document, and uh, let's go ahead and just toss it in there as cyan, just so we know what we're doing. It's always good to name things when you're working in Photoshop. I'm just being sloppy now for the sake of this tutorial. So when we select our image, um, this is our document with our four color layers. 
we have this new little channel over here called cyan. What we want to do is to hit control A and we get this little selection marquee. Control C to copy it. And now we're done with this. We can just go ahead and delete it. Now we go back to our layers. We'll select our cyan layer. And what we want to do is we want to hit this button right here. This little square with a circle cut out of it. This is our mask. What this will do is this will create a image that lets us um, should, like determine what's showing on this layer. Um, so I'll just illustrate really quickly. If I were to take black and take like a brush and just start drawing on my mask, and you see my mask is selected because it's got this white uh, corner frame thing, and just start drawing. What it's actually doing is it's kind of erasing the cyan layer, but it's not actually doing it on the cyan layer itself. It's masking it out, and we're seeing the magenta layer underneath. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. Um, what we want to do is we want to paste what we copied into this layer channel. And unfortunately, uh, you have to go through a little bit of a roundabout way of doing it in Photoshop. Um, here's another hotkey. You have to Alt and then left click. And now we're actually seeing that layer mask on our canvas. And then we could just paste in our layer mask. Now, if we go back here, it looks a little bit funky. Um, we haven't got the rest of them in, but it's also kind of inverted if you're really paying attention to what's going on. So what we can do is we can go back into our layer mask by Alt and left clicking. And here's another hotkey, Control I will invert it. And now, our cyan showing up where it's supposed to show up. Um, so let's go ahead and just hide that for now. And we'll just go through all of our other layers and get the ones that we need. So duplicate channel, send it to the other document, name it because we're organized in our other document. Control A, Control C, go into the layers, hit this little button here, Alt left click on the layer mask, and paste, and invert. Now let's just go ahead and go through it again because that's how we learn, by repeating things. So here's our yellow layer, duplicate channel, send it to the other document, And we actually uh, can go ahead and just get rid of these. We don't need these. Oops, let's go ahead and undo that. You're not supposed to. All right, we're gonna keep that. We, we need that one. This one on the other hand, Control A, Control C, go to our layers, make a mask, paste it, or yep, toss it in there. So Alt left click on the layer mask to get in there. Control I to invert it. And last but not least is the black. Duplicate channel. Control A, Control C. Hit the mask button. Alt left click, paste, invert. Um, the reason why we're inverting in the black channel is actually really good to see um, is the mask will show what's in white and will hide what's in black. Um, so we want our borders black, um, which is why we want them white in the mask. So those are all of our layers and we get something that sort of looks like our uh, first card here. Let's go into our layers and turn on all of our channels. That's not that bad, but it's not perfect. Um, and that's because right now we're missing the cyan for one, um, and two, ink is transparent. And if we want to reflect that, the way that ink blends, we need to change the way that all of these layers blend. So what we can do is we can control click on each of these layers to select them all and change their blending mode to multiply and boom, 
we have recreated our card. Um, and this is really what we're going for. So now we can toggle our layers on and off the same way we were with the channels. But what we also have control over is the opacity. Um, and I could dial that down to 40% and say, hey, this is exactly what a gemstone mine would look like if the cyan ink was 40% present. Um, now, when it comes to sun bleaches, we know that the magenta and yellow layers fade. Um, so if you wanted to represent a partial fade, you could bring that down to 40%, bring this one down to 43%, and that is pretty much what a sun bleached gemstone mine looks like. Um, I hope this tutorial helps you guys. Um, it's actually a lot of fun to play with because you can come up with all sorts of different combinations. Um, you could even mess around with inverting uh, which mask belong to which layer um, to try and figure out like if a uh, print ink was swapped, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but at its simplest level, this is how you identify sun bleaches, um, at least with Photoshop. Um, and I will caveat, it's not a perfect method. There's no way for us to get the raster image processing data to get all of those individual little dots. Um, so this is the best we've got. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long-winded or too complicated. Um, if you have questions, just go ahead and ask me. And thanks for watching.